Good morning, everyone. I'm Iman. I'm a postdoc at Valerio's lab. And uh, I'm presenting today an update on the vibrational mating disruption in a vineyard. So thanks to Valerio's introduction, I will jump directly into the topic. And uh, so the mating disruption ba based on vibrations was uh, brought into practice uh, into practical uh, experimentation in open fields since 2017 in order to control two main uh, grapevine pests uh, that are exclusively communicating by vibrational signals. And to do so, a disturbance noise was played back through the shakers that you can see that are attached to the pole. And the vibrations are transmitted through the wire system in the, uh, through the wires in the trellis system to vibrate the plants and control the pests. The two target species, as uh, Valerio anticipated, are uh, Scaphoideus titanus, the um, factor of uh, the phytoplasma disease, and uh, another important pest of the vineyard, Empoasca vitis. And the disturbance noise is designed to uh, interfere with the mating of both insect species. So the experimental area consists of a control area where nothing is happening and a treated area where the vibrations are played back through 57 uh, rows. And uh, basically there are two shakers uh, per row covering a range of um, 50 meters of distance. So the question is, how well does the system perform in terms of efficacy of the mating disruption? And uh, we did evaluate that through monitoring the insect species, uh, while we also evaluated the transmission efficacy through the system by uh, the technical monitoring, by monitoring uh, the intensity of the signals through the vineyard in order also to evaluate its durability. So we'll start with the biological monitoring that consisted of uh, visual checking of the nymphs of both Impoasca and Scaphideus that dwell basically on the lower side of the leaves. So we go there weekly during the summer season and we count uh, the number of immature stages per leaves. Uh, the, the checks were 20 leaves per plant and many plants per plot. While for the adult stages, they were monitored by the sticky traps, since the adults uh, fly and are attracted with the yellow sticky traps, the, those were checked uh, weekly, and this was repeated uh, over the years. Results of the um, uh, checks of the immature stages showed, shows already um, a significant decrease of the population density in the treated area compared to the control area. And as we can see here for, I don't know if I can put it. So for Scaphoideus, we, we already see uh, results starting from 2018, so after a year of application. While for Scaphoideus, the, um, the system was updated in 2018, so um, the significant decrease was observed starting from 2019. This was for the nymphs. For the adults, the story is a bit different. So there is a tendency of having more captures in the treated area than in the uh, control area. And the explanation could be that the disturbance noise might have an effect on the flight activity of the adults, but this is gonna be explained better and more in detail by uh, Raquel later on in this afternoon. Um, then, for the technical measurements, we measured the intensity of um, the disturbance noise along the wires, so at the increasing distances from the source point, that is the shaker, but also we did measure a bit the intensity through the plant to see how um, it is um, varying. So basically, um, Ah, here I have to explain that. The system is, we have a pole and there are wires going through holes that are in the pole. And those wires that are a bit thick, but then we have thinner wires that are a bit 
um, hooked to the uh, pole and they are touching it. So we also wanted to see if there is a difference between the, the two levels of um, wire thickness. Uh, so measurements of the density were um, done on the touching points of the wires on the plant. So we measured the intensity on the wire and on the corresponding contact point on the plant, but also on um, points that are not touching the wires but are close or far from uh, those points. And yeah, as we might expect, the intensity drops already if we go on the contact points from the wire itself to the point, to the corresponding point on the plant, and we already lose something like 30% of, uh, of the average intensity. Um, also, as we might expect, points that are in contact with um, the wires have a higher intensity compared to the ones that are not in contact. But overall, we can say that the uh, general distribution of the uh, intensity of the disturbance noise through the plant is more or less good because it's only significantly lower when we go very, very far from the contact points of the wires and the plant. And it doesn't matter if uh, we are vibrating the thick wire or the thin, wi uh, the thin wires, the intensity is still good, at least on the um, plants that are very close to the pole. Then, uh, for the measurements that were done on the, um, on the wires, uh, the intensity was recorded at increasing distances uh, on the uh, wire from the pole, but also this was taken into consideration and repeated in the season. So basically, uh, no, this is for the distance. Uh, in early in the season when the plants are not fully developed, but later in the season when uh, there is uh, an important weight of the plant on the trellis system. And uh, so here we can see the results of um, that were uh, carried out uh, on early in the season when the plant is not fully developed uh, here in orange and in blue we can see already the effect of the weight of the plant so the intensity of uh, the disturbance noise uh, is attenuated uh, already at 80% when we go over 10 meters so at very short distances when the plants are fully developed compared to uh, earlier in the season. If we compare um, the intensity over the years, and here the measurements were done on the leaves actually, we can see that already after two years the intensity is highly attenuated and at eight meters we are already below the, uh, the threshold, the safety threshold that Valerio was talking about earlier. Then, um, a model was uh, developed just to see how the system behaves to an, um, a stimuli of uh, vibrations. And I think, yeah, this was uh, seen before. And when we confronted the results of the model with measurements that were taken in the field, they are actually matching. Why this is important? This is, I think, a good um, result to also predict the behavior of the system depending on the intensity on the source, but also very important to adjust the intensity through the system depending on the threshold that we should have uh, on the plant. So to summarize, is the system effective? Yes, because it is able to, do, to reduce the population density of both target species, but we have to take into consideration the distance from the source point of the vibrations, the weight of the plants, uh, but also the um, um, progress uh, over the years because the system might need maintenance in order to uh, guarantee and ensure um, the safety threshold that is a very important component for the disruption of uh, uh, the insect species that we are targeting. What are the perspectives? We would like to model also the transmission of the vibrations through the plant. So at least we know um, at, at very uh, different distances from the source points of the vibrations, how is the intensity? 
And as Valerio stressed before, uh, it's important to know if we have spots on the plants where the intensity is low or we, where it's not covered very well by vibrations and insects might go there and mate. And ultimately, actually, it would be uh, important if uh, sensors can be integrated in the system and this way it can monitor itself so wherever you have a problem of a drop of intensity below the threshold on that part of the system it can alert you and you go there and you fix uh, the problem but yeah this is a this is a, a goal for a, for a smart uh, integrated pest management system that might be um, possible in the future and uh, for that I would like to thank everybody of the group that participated in uh, this, the in the project um, I would like to thank all the technicians that helped in the monitoring of the leaves in these cheeky traps over the years and uh, we should thank also our funding buddies and I thank you for your attention <laughs>